Are you getting up multiple times at night to go to the bathroom? Are you rushing to the toilet in the day? Is your flow very weak and it takes you seemingly forever to try and empty your bladder? Then it is possible that you are dealing with a benign enlarged prostate. For those of you new to the channel, my name is Dr. Charles Chabert. I'm a urologist and director of the Prostate Clinic, which is located here on the Gold Coast in Australia. In the following video, I want to highlight for you uh, the specifics related to a robotic simple prostatectomy for the management of massive BPH. As always, if you get benefit from the video, please like, subscribe, and don't forget to comment or share your journey in the comment section down below. Let's start with an overview about what is BPH or benign prostatic hyperplasia. That's the technical term for a benign enlarged prostate. In essence, as we progress through life, the prostate tends to grow and approximately 50% of men in their 50s will have some symptoms related to enlargement. And that figure extends all the way to around 70 to 80% of men in their 80s will have urinary issues related to an enlarged prostate. Now, there are a whole host of different treatment options available for men if they have urinary issues starting from essentially doing nothing. And that really obviously is appropriate for those men where they have minimal bother and no complications from their plumbing issue. We have medications, we have minimally invasive treatments, but what do we do if someone has massive BPH? By definition, a massive prostate is one that is in excess of around 100 grams, 100 cc's or 100 mils in size. The traditional description of a prostate is that it's a walnut-sized gland. A walnut-sized gland on average is going to be around 30 to 35 cc's, cubic centimeters in size. So we define massive BPH really as someone who has a prostate size that is around three to four times the size that it should be, or a normal prostate. Now, how do we manage those prostates? Well, that's where a robotic simple prostatectomy comes into play. Robotic, a type of keyhole surgery, on average using around six small incisions inside the tummy. Simple because it refers to the non-cancerous enlargement of the prostate. If someone was going to have a robotic radical prostatectomy, then that man would have cancer. And the aim of that treatment would be to remove the whole prostate. When we perform a robotic simple prostatectomy, in essence, what we're doing is peeling away or enucleating all of the overgrown enlarged prostate that really grows from the middle part of the prostate. The aim of this treatment is to remove that tissue, leave a man with a capsule, the prostatic capsule, which really is, by, scientifically, is the peripheral zone of the prostate. And one of the advantages to a robotic simple prostatectomy is that we are able to create a new urethra. Now, the urethra really is the outlet pipe of the bladder. And when we do a robotic simple prostatectomy, we pull the lining of the bladder through the central cavity inside the prostate that has developed in light of us removing all the overgrown tissue, and we create a new urethra or a new tube inside the prostate. Now, one of the key advantages to this comes in the recovery phase. Now, if I take a step back, many men, when they have urinary symptoms, it starts with obstruction. The prostate grows, it blocks the bladder, and men are aware that their flow is weaker. It takes them longer to pee. It can be intermittent. It starts, stop, and sometimes men feel as if they haven't emptied completely. With time, the bladder becomes thicker and stiffer in response to having to squeeze harder to force urine beyond the blockage. When that happens, men notice that they rush more. They go more frequently. They get up at night, so men have bladder symptoms. Now, the bladder symptoms for the majority of men are the most annoying, and they take the longest period of time to recover. When we create a new urethra, through the process of a robotic simple prostatectomy, a lot of the irritation that can accommodate many BPH treatments, such as a TERP or a HOLAP or a green light laser prostatectomy, are reduced significantly because there isn't that point of irritation. 
because we have a new urethra. So the procedure, obviously done in hospital, done under a general anesthetic, six little incisions in the tummy. Most men are in hospital for one to two nights. They're discharged with a catheter and that's removed usually within around seven days. The catheter is there to decompress the bladder, allow it to recover, and uh, then it is removed. What can men expect? They can expect a big improvement in their flow, so the obstruction is removed. Really, it is as definitive a treatment choice as we can expect, and the probability of having recurrent BPH in someone's lifetime really is at the lower end of the spectrum. Irritative symptoms, those bladder symptoms, tend to recover usually over two to three months. From a sexual function point of view, every man can expect to have retrograde ejaculation or an ejaculation. In essence, it means when he has an orgasm, there will be no fluid that is emitted. The probability that erections are reduced uh, or interfered with is at the lower end of the spectrum. And I quote men, the probability that your erections are not as hard or as durable as they were prior to surgery is around 5% or less. I hope this answers your questions. If you've been through a robotic simple prostatectomy, please, if you're prepared to leave your story, leave your comments in the comment section down below. Uh, if you'd like to know more about your prostate or prostate treatments, please have a look at this video or alternatively this video here. Until the next time, take care of your prostate.